Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, December 16th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida while teaching at the Cyber Defense Initiative in Washington, D.C. A lot of news still about solar winds, uh, nothing really fundamentally different from what we already talked about. Solar winds has sent emails uh, to affected and non-affected customers. So if you are a customer, you should have received an email that should state if you downloaded or didn't download an affected version of solar winds there's also a lot of so speculations around this event of course like with any big event and be a little bit careful here if you read some interesting exciting news uh, that you double check it uh, try to find the original sources and try to verify it with other independent uh, sort of uh, news outlets uh, to figure out if this is something to really worry about and a little bit related to this, well, Didier Stevens, he went to Virus Total to look for some of FireEye's stolen tools, given that they published the signatures. And he found some malicious documents that apparently were used in the past in some penetration tests. And he shows you how to analyze uh, these particular tools. Of course, uh, taking advantage of his favorite tool, Ollie Dump. The document he found is actually reasonably straightforward. So real nice sample if you want to hone your reverse analysis skills. And talking about uh, Didier, uh, Didier was also awarded one of the 2020 Difference Makers Awards by SANS. This is something that SANS awards always at this Cyber Defense Initiative uh, conference. It's happening uh, right now, which of course is typically also the last conference of the year. This year, of course, no big awards ceremony instead we'll have a webcast on thursday where the different winners of the award this year are introduced and f5 fixed uh, three vulnerabilities in its uh, big ip appliances two of which are rated as high one of them is really more a denial of service vulnerability if you do have the ftp profile configured an attacker uh, could disrupt ftp connections second one i think is actually worse it's a simple reflective cross-site scripting vulnerability and that of course uh, could always uh, be leverage depending on how uh, the attacker manages to actually weaponize uh, this particular vulnerability. And a little bit overshadowed by the solar winds news was a pretty significant outage in most of Google's tools on Monday morning. Now, for at least uh, the US time zones, it was uh, pretty early and didn't really affect users uh, too heavily, but it did certainly affect uh, users in Europe and such for whom it was already sort of the middle of uh, the business day. Google now uh, did uh, post a quick postmortem uh, for uh, this uh, outage and basically states that the root cause was that, well, Google ran out of disk space. You wouldn't necessarily think that that can happen, but apparently the automated quota management system had a reduced capacity for some of Google's central identity management system, and that caused uh, these errors. And of course, if authentication fails, pretty much everything else fails. Uh, one interesting note here in uh, this uh, quick write-up by Google is that a uh, little problem they had, and I've heard of this uh, from others as well, was that uh, their own employees could not use their tools like email and such because that's essentially all the same platform uh, which uh, did delay some of the communication about this incident. And then we got an interesting vulnerability, actually a set of three vulnerabilities in the uh, Golang encoding XML library. Now, this is sort of interesting for a number of reasons. First of all, what's essentially happening here is if this library is parsing a message and then reconstituting the message, basically sending the message back, well, uh, the semantic of the message may slightly change. 
while initially this doesn't really sound like a big deal. For example, some uh, attributes uh, maybe removed that had no value set. This can become a problem if you're using XML messages for authentication, like for example, what happens in SAML authentication, which of course is very often used sort of in these uh, web services scenarios and such. Another interesting issue here is, well, there is no simple patch for uh, this vulnerability. Instead, a matter most, the company that found the vulnerability is open sourcing an XML round trip validator, which basically you can use to check your messages, whether or not they're formed correctly and whether they will be altered in a round trip through the XML encoding engine in Golang. So far from ideal, but if you are coding in Go, if you are using it uh, for SAML in particular, then please take a look at Mattermost's blog and their new XML round trip validator. Well, that is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.